Hey everybody, welcome back. It is more round four Permasan Invitational content, and it seems that this is the last one that's going to get played today. We do have one other set from this round, but unfortunately they were not able to figure out a time. They just The time zones did not match up throughout the week. We are going to give them a 48-hour extension that is X-Ray and Blightbringer. Hopefully they get it done and we don't have to make an activity decision. But like I said, that means this is going to be the last set of the day. Uh, this should be a real uh, real treat for you guys who come to my channel, presumably, to watch ADV. Now, granted, we are starting in Gen 4 here, but these are two, uh, out of the people in the field, these are two guys who their ADV is the strongest. Asta Matitos, who is known far and wide for his ADV, and Starmaster, who has year after year after year uh, been very deep and consistent in Callus Invitational, including making money in Callus Invitational 2. Uh, but he's never had a bad run. He's just gone deep every single year. One of the best and most consistent players out there. So this is actually a rematch from Callus Invitational 4. I don't remember what round these guys played in. I think it was fairly deep, maybe round ugh, 5 or 6. It was pretty deep. And I believe Starmaster did win that. But these guys definitely have played against each other before. And this is the lower bracket, so one of these guys, very talented players here, one way or another, will meet their end and be out of the tournament right here. So let's find out how that plays out. We're going to start in Diamond Pearl Platinum, and as you guys know, the player who does not win this game will choose where to go with the next one. So here's game one. Astra's on the bottom with an Uxie, and it is a lead coon on the top for Star Master. Doesn't like his matchup, goes to Magnazone, and it's just going to be turn one rocks for Asta. So we've got ourselves some kind of stall team, which is, I mean, Kuhn Clef, right? What else is it going to be? Here comes Lati checking Lucario, who's going to go for immediate calm mind here. Uh, a lot of people do not know. Uh, this is a relatively new thing, but Lucario's special attack stat is actually higher than its attack stat, which is weird because with the... The Fighting Steel typing, which are obviously generally physical types, but yeah, it um, it actually hits harder from the special end than it does from the physical, so Combine Lucario has been a thing recently. We saw Jabba busted out earlier, and when he explained correctly in the chat for this tournament that it has higher special attack stat, multiple people who play DPP are like, I, I didn't know that, what do you mean? So that was kind of a cool thing that came out of this tour. I don't know how good it is, but at least it's something new. So anyhow, uh, we have Heatran going on here, missing a Magma Storm against Clef. She's going to get rocks up, so both players do have that hazard down. And the Magma Storms are continuing. There is knockoff, so no more berry for Heatran. Pasho Berry gets knocked off. And Astus had enough. He's just going to trade. There's the boom, there's the trade. We've got ourselves a 5-5. Five five. Starmie comes in, previously unrevealed, trying to spin away the hazards, but instead going to go for the aggressive play of Surf against the Jirachi. 49% is not bad, but the Body Slam does find the para. Asta doesn't want to play this game. He's out of the way, and Lucario sneaks in on the Protect. Here's Combined, and Body Slam again, fishing for para. 60-40 of that happening thanks to Serene Grace, but Star does not find it. Calm mind number two, and Body Slam doesn't find it this time either, so that's two 60% rolls not going Star's way. Here's Lati, and there is the Aura Sphere doing quite a bit, 45%. Lati not going to live another should Lucario get another one off. T-Wave, and yep, there's the Aura Sphere, so down it goes. Critical hit didn't matter. Lati falls, and Asta going to take the lead at 5-4. to four. Loom comes in, Asta also still has a hidden poke. There's Vacuum Wave that also does a ton. Force Palm comes back from Loom, but that's also going to die to the sand. So this is a result of a trade, and we now have a 3-4 to four situation with Asta in the lead. Wish and Rain Dance, so Sand is gone, even though Asta's the one who made it in the first place. Iron Head comes down and a flinch, and Rashi eats its own wish. U-Turn comes down, Kingdra the last poke for Asta, previously unrevealed, so full teams on the table. Makes sense why the Rain Dance is there. Hydro Pump the one-hit knockout on the Rachi. And just like that, Asta pushing his lead. He's got that 4-2 advantage now. Kuhn is the last hope for Star Master. I don't think Magnazone gets this done, more than likely. He switches to that now. And there is the trick. Good thing he did that. He didn't want to get his Kuhn screwed over by that. And it is Specs for Scarf. T-Bolt comes down, 52%. 
Nothing Asta can do. He's going to let the T-Tar go. That's going to faint. So now it is going to be a 3-2. to two. Starmie comes in trying to get some revenge. Star, of course, is going to go to Kuhn here. And there's the immediate surf bouncing off the Kuhn for just 16%. Not a big deal. Kingdra comes in at this point. We've seen only Hydro Pump from it. And Kuhn is going to calm mind up. Kuhn seems very dangerous here for Asta. Draco Meteor gets avoided. That's quite poor, but as it turns out, it doesn't matter because it would not have killed without a crit, and Rest was coming anyway. Now Starmie is going to be the answer for Asta, who you guys can't see it, but has disconnected a couple of times and had to come back. He's having some internet issues, it seems, in real time. This is a replay. So Kingdra against Starmaster here, and his Coon is going to go Dragon Pulse. Decent chunk, 31%, but he finds Calm Mind in his sleep to... Make the future attacks do less, so he's going to need a critical hit here. 25% Dragon Pulse does not find it. Star going to be safe. Go immediately for rest. And Asta resigned to fishing for a critical hit here. He's going to need one or he's going to lose to this coon. Sleep Talk is a whiff. Finding rest. Hasn't actually shown... Uh, yes, he has shown the last movie. He's got Surf, so we know the full coon set. Not that it was ever really going to be anything other than Surf as the last move. No Scald quite yet, but it's coming. And there is the Dragon Pulse crit, actually. So Asta does manage to kill the Coon, but the zone is actually a problem now, given what Asta has left and the health of what Asta has left. There's the Thunderbolt. That leaves Asta with only the 8% Kingdra to deal with this, and he's going to miss the Hydro Pump. That's going to be nice for Star. The Hydro Pump is not going to get there, and Thunderbolt is going to finish the job. Star Master going to take down this Game 1. And Asta is going to have the option of what to do now, and he's going to take us exactly where you guys, my YouTube viewers, want him to take it. He's going to take it to Gen 3. I know that's what you guys want to see, and it's where these guys are best, and it's a rematch from Kalos Invitational. So Gen 3 between Star and Asta is always a treat. Hopefully it's not a massive hacks fest and it's a decent game. That's what we all want to see, me included. I haven't watched any of these games. I don't know how it ends, so we're going to find out together. Reminder, this is the lower bracket, so should Asta lose this game or a potential Game 3, which would be black and white if that happens, Asta will be eliminated by Star Master from this tournament. So let's see if Asta can fight back and stay alive. Here is Game 2 between Asta and Star Master for Permasan Invitational Round 4. Asta's on the bottom, Star's on the top, and they have common leads in Meta and T-Tar respectively, but Meta, who usually has the better end of this matchup, opts to get out of the way. Fori coming in for Star, and it's going to spike up on Swampert as a Hydro Pump misses. Now Venusaur comes in, Hydro Pump does connect on that, but it only does about a fourth, not a huge deal. It's going to be a free opportunity here for a Leech Seed, a Sleep Powder, whatever he may want to do. He does go for the Sleep Powder, generically safe, however... He's going to unluckily miss that on the Blissey. Now, it's going to be Bliss on Bliss. Flamethrower there was nice from Asta. That would have toasted the Fori had Star gone for it. Good thing he didn't. Did get a burn on the opposing Bliss, but she's going to get out of the way right now and bring in Titar. That's also going to get hit with Flamethrower, but the crucial thing is it doesn't get burnt. And we see that Titar does have lefties here. Flamethrower again, and it's a Roar. And that's going to drag out the Metagross that he led with. And that also, as we see, has lefties. Fori reappears. Hidden Power Fire. Nails it. Good play for Asta. And not so hot for Star. He's going to have to get out of the way or die. And it's a nice double from Asta. Knowing that the Fori would switch. He takes the opportunity to get Skarm in. So now they both have a layer of spikes. Fori comes in for lefties. Gets hit with Drill Pack. There is Rapid Spin, but Fori very low now. It's going to be a prediction now for Asta to Drill Pack again or to Spike. And he is incorrect. He goes for the Drill Pack, but Spikes would have been better. Star Master out predicts Asta there and gets the T-Tar in. Fire Blast aimed at the Skarm or the Meta would have been good in either case. He's shown Roar and Blast, so probably looking at Crunch and Pursuit as the last two moves. When, fair, uh, when paired with Fori, usually it is the Crunch Pursuit Tower to remove the Gengar, so Fori can actually spin. And we've got ourselves a Bliss Mirror match here. Seismic Toss and Toxic, respectively. Hidden Pokes on both sides. Uh, the most common last poke on this very well-known archetype that Star is using is Aerodactyl. Uh, it's a team that I've used, that Linear's used. It's a team that I lost to in the last SPL in the hands of Tomahome. It is a very well-known archetype. 
Uh, Asta sticking to his usual, a well-known Skarm Bliss, and usually Swampert too, but Skarm Bliss specifically a well-known spammer. He does not deviate too, too far from that core, and here Asta is fighting for his tournament life, going with, well, his comfort, Skarm Bliss. So, uh, the Venusaur is getting back up to full health here, leeching off the very high health pool of the Bliss. Star tries to go to Fori here to get more Leech Seed off the Bliss. That would have healed it completely. But this time, it is Asta out predicting Fori, getting the Drill Pack off. Down that goes. There will be no more spikes coming down from Star Master. Though there is still that layer beneath Asta's team that it doesn't seem like he has an answer for. Though he does still have one unrevealed poke. The Bliss comes in on T-Tar, which is unusual, but he feels very confident that it is a strictly special T-Tar, and it does not have a physical move, and I think that's a safe bet, and it looks like he's right. So the Bliss does get soft-boiled off as the last poke, the expected last poke, the Aerodactyl, comes into play and finds an immediate flinch on the Bliss, unluckily for Asta. He's forced to switch out to one of his at least two rock resists that we know of. He turns out to be meta, and he's going to go for Pursuit on the arrow on the way out. And it's mediocre, it does a third, but, I mean, it all adds up because the arrow does not, of course, have leftovers. And it is a last poke rapid spinner for Asta, but it is weak to crunch in pursuit. Should it stay in and go rapid spin here, he risks getting hit with one of those. He goes hydro pump, and he devastates the T-Tar for 96%, but he does not survive the crunch. So we've got ourselves a tie game now at 5-5. Five Nice close back and forth one with a lot of good plays, which is exactly what I was hoping to see from these two guys. Hydro Pump comes down from Swampert, nailing T-Tar on the other side, but not killing it. And there's Protect for lefties, because why not? He's going to Rock Slide here. It's either an over-prediction or fishing for a desperation flinch, but he gets neither. Earthquake takes him out, so the T-Tar down for Asta. And we've got ourselves a 5-4 to four now with Blissey, who's also very low, trying to sneak in and get something done here. She's going to go Soft-Boiled, but Aerodactyl comes in just as she does that, as it did last time. Double edge there for Star. The out prediction now for Asta, calling what he would go for and going to the correct poke in Skarm. Spikes are established now again for Asta, and Star, with his spinner also down, both spinners are down, cannot remove those. Hydro Pump coming down. Bliss is going to find herself at about a third. She'll probably soft-boiled here. Yep. And Earthquake from the slower Swamp Bird is not going to negate that. It's going to do only about a third, whereas obviously the Soft Boiled is recovering 50%. But Asta, unluckily, is going to miss Toxic here. And that's going to allow on the Soft Boiled Star Master to go to Venusaur or Arrow, whatever he wants to do. He actually opts to stay in an Earthquake here. So Asta going to Soft Boiled some more. And Star continuing to put the Earthquake pressure on. It's not negating the Soft Boils, but he is fishing for crits every time he does this. And now Star is going to fodder off his T-Tar to prevent another Soft Boiled. Aerodactyl gets in at this point, and Asta, again, must get out of the way. And an immediate Rock Slide critical hit is going to kill Skarm. Breaks the game wide open, well set up by Star, and then he catches the break that he needs. Good sequence for him. Aerodactyl does get hit with the Pursuit again, so it's getting low, but Asta is clearly behind at this point. We end up with Pert on Pert. There is Earthquake. One of these things is not like the other. Not only is there a big health difference between them, but the Sleeping Swampert for Asta is not going to get it done. Insult to injury. There's a critical hit from Star Master. Pert goes down, and Star really starting to get a stranglehold on this game. Asta down to only Metagross and Blissey against the squad of four from Star Master, one of which has a sleep-inducing move. He's going to go for it here. There's the Sleep Powder on the Bliss, which is obnoxious. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Leech Seed comes down, and it's going to be Flamethrower in response for the immediate wake-up. But he really needed some hacks there, a crit, a burn, what have you, and he did not find either of those things. Meta comes in, that's going to get put to sleep by Venusaur, so this is really tough for Asta. He's got a sleeping Meta and a Blissey only against the full squad for Star. Asta needs an immediate wake-up and then a crit or an attack raise or something, but he's continuing to take his nap. Blissey reappears, hidden power, possibly fire. It's the most common hidden power on Venusaur in this archetype, but it's not going to connect with the meta. It's going to hit Blissey instead. She obviously does not care about it, but what she does care about is the obnoxious Leech Seed against her enormous, highest in the whole game, health pool. 
Toxic coming down on the opposing Bliss. At least it puts a little bit of a clock, but this is a desperate situation for Asta. He is really going to have to catch every break that he needs from here on out to not lose this game. Starmaster looking good for the 2-0 series victory to knock out Asta Matitos, as he did in Callus Invitational earlier in the year. Earthquake there on the Bliss brings her to 27%. We saw earlier in the matchup that Blissey is faster here, so she can get soft boiled off, and she'll do exactly that. Earthquake from Star trying to keep the pressure on, negate some of the recovery, and obviously he's looking for a crit as well, but he doesn't need a crit, whereas Asta does need to avoid a crit. That would be devastating should it come, and Star has given himself many opportunities to find it, but it has not come for him. There is Snatch stealing Soft Boiled. That's a nice little play for Asta. Going to keep pressure on the opposing Bliss and get a free heal out of it. That was a good turn. A couple more turns like that. And maybe Asta can make something happen here. And he's going to go for Flamethrower, thinking maybe there'd be a switch to something like the Venusaur. Didn't happen, but he's got the other Bliss in a good place. And she gets out of the way. The Blissy for Star Master is effectively dead. She is at 7%. She will die when she comes in to that spike. So good little sequence for Asta, getting a little bit of momentum back and maybe getting back into this game, but he really desperately needed a wake up on that turn. It did not come and the earthquake took him out. He needed to wake up and blow up there to have any chance and that did not occur and it is now not looking pretty. Bliss here with more than zero chance, but not by too much. Here's the problem. There's the Bliss fodder. Star knows how to play this. He's not a dummy. He fodders Bliss. He gets the Aerodactyl in for free, preventing the soft boil again from Bliss, from Asta. And there is the double edge for the kill. No chance of that missing the way that Rock Slide potentially could. Double edge takes it out, and that is going to be the game. That was very level, uh, very high level ADV, as I would have expected from these two guys. Two of the best ADVs in the world. Great game. Very, very well played. A lot of high level, nuanced stuff on display there. A good game to learn from if you guys want to really step your game up at ADV. Uh, but the results in the context of this tournament are a 2-0 victory for Star, eliminating Asta. Asta very good at these formats. Like I said, he was the winner of the Badass Tour uh, earlier in the year, or last year perhaps, which had these exact three same formats. So he obviously is very capable in this, but he was not able to repeat that performance here. 2-2, a respectable record, obviously, but that's going to be the end of the line for him, and Star Master will fight on. So uh, that's going to be it for today. It's going to be the end of round four. Like I said, there is that one other outstanding match between X-Ray and Blightbringer, but it is known at this point that it is not going to play today. Uh, we're going to give them a 48-hour extension, and we're going to figure out that match as soon as we can. I'll bring it to you when I'm able to. But in the meantime, that's going to be it for the day. Uh, there's been quite a few games. I definitely feel like I've been narrating a lot today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and it, you know, holds you over until the next set gets played. And then it's going to be round five coming up next, which is all lower brackets. It'll be all elimination matches, high stakes, all that good stuff. Thumbs up if you liked the video, and I will see you guys soon with more Permasand Invitational.